children in Israel. That all tribes and communities that are under one banner, one nation, and one king, may be blessed. And may the most high keep you. And may he shine his face upon you. Hallelujah. 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 Ya barika Yahweh, we is America. Ya Yahweh, Ponaya, Elika, we Funeka. Yes,
you, Baruch. This dedication. That all of us taking up arms together may be in one spirit and one mind under one king. That we forget everything that we've done at this moment. And understand we only can go forward, Father, but we choose the narrow and straight path rather than the wide and crooked. And so we pray, we pray for our, our brothers and sisters scattered across the four corners of the earth who are keeping this day in sincerity and truth. And those who may be struggling to understand, Father, how we must live for you. I pray that you give them a spirit of understanding. You give them a spirit of hope. And you give them a spirit of, of just being able to do it, Father. And so we give thanks unto you on this given day. We give thanks for our ancestors, Father, for fighting for us. Those who stood, stood in, 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 in the midst of the wickedness that still stood up for your righteousness, oh, Elohim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let it create us a heart like thou, we, Father. Yeah, yeah. Give us the wisdom of Shalom, Father. Yeah, right. Give us the faith of Abraham, Father. Hallelujah. Let us wrestle with the angel God, like, like God woe, Father. Yeah. Let us show our dedication to you on this given day. Let no man stand against us. Hallelujah. But who can stand against us, Father, when we have you? Who shall we fear, Father? Who shall we be afraid of, Father? But look, no man can step against us, Father. We have a force that no man can reckon with, Father. Each are trying to do it, they could not. The Persians try to do it, they could not. The Greeks try to do it, they could not. And this wicked system called America, Babylon the Great Horde, will not. Now, one thing they create can go against your power, O Elohim. So we bless you, and we call upon your mighty name. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah!
And so we have to make sure we speak and span, and we have been through that refining period to meet that goal that was in the holy place. Right? And so this is what this is about, man. And I really want us to give a round of applause for our ancestors who shed their blood for us. I mean, look at all these babies we got here. They're not teaching this in school. I remember I, uh, just two weeks ago when I was doing substitute teaching, um, they you know, they preparing for uh, Christmas or whatnot, and they started talking about Hanukkah. Mm. Now, of course, from a Jewish perspective, well, white folks, I'm like, y'all teaching these children their history, and they don't even know it. That's crazy, isn't it? And you know, you know I had to be at peace, unfortunately, we in the workplace. But it's like they teach a baby that look like they're our history. And not telling them that this is your people, not those white people. It's your people. And so today we're going we gonna to scream it out loud. We're going to tell everybody our history. We got so-called black history 12 months a year, not just one month. And I think this is a big, big factor in our history, which, is, which shows us uh, we had a time when we did not fear our enemies, but we stood up. We had, we had less men. You know what I'm saying? Think about the movie 300. If y'all didn't know, that's about us. Dang. You know what I'm saying? That's us born. That's not them. That was us. We read about Judah and his brothers going on. I mean, think about Levi. After they did to uh after what they did to his sister. Only a few of them went to slaughter a whole village. How many people y'all know in society or in any nation doing that? And it's only been by the power of the most high that we able to do that. You don't have to fight for them over there. So before we get started, I do want us to open it up uh, with our foundation. And Elohim spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, who hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of Potiphar. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I am the Lord thy God, and I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within the gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that are in them, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which is the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those are the ten, ten pillars that our nation sits upon. This is, this, this is the, I guess you said, the umbrella of all the laws. You know, if you can understand no one, you can you easily understand the rest of the law. Because all, of, all, of, all, of, all the other laws are, are a branch off of one law. You look at, no doubt, shall have no other Elohim. But you go to different two, a lot of different laws and, and break that down, right? And so when you look at the perspective of where these Ten Commandments came from, where they derived from, it's because what we were doing in Egypt, right? Everything, even this dedication, as you will see, will go back to Egypt. And so when you see Egypt and you, you relate it to it here, there, there's nothing different. You see pyramids, you go to the Vegas, you see pyramids right now. You can see all the idols they have. You know what I'm saying? Now, people walk around in the same mindset that we're Egyptian or we committed, right? So we have to be able to break these strongholds within our people. But it first starts with dedicating people. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, and before we really get started, uh, for those who have babies, just so if there is any crime, make sure y'all go to office. There won't be any disruption. Okay? Okay. All right. So before we get started, uh, we're going to have uh, Kanakia, our Kanakia, come light the first candle for the first day. Set structure to follow, then that came. 
Mm-hmm. We're in a time where love is going to prevail all this. Mm-hmm. And our hate and our control is love. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We be quick to bang on the Christians, but although they don't even understand what they're talking about, but that love shall prevail all. You got to learn how to love your brother. You do. But the first thought was you rededicate yourself to clean your own temple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Job 8 8. This is the book of Job, chapter 8, verse 8. Uh huh. For inquire, I pray thee of the former age. Say it again, read loud. For inquire, I pray thee of the former age. Uh huh. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. Why? Why should we prepare ourselves for that search? Huh? I said, because you will be judged one day. You can, you can go with that. We will be judged one day. What up? Take the words on y'all real quick. Think more in, in retrospect of yourself. You might find yourself. That's most definitely one. You might find yourself. Hey. What else made you find yourself? What made you find following the cookie? How you go find the cookie? You can find a cookie, right? Mm-hmm. But you also can learn from their mistakes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can learn from where they, where they, we ain't gonna say fail, but where they came short at, and we take the torch to keep going. You see what I'm saying? Same thing with Mashiach. Mashiach didn't finish his work because he looked at us to finish it for him so he can go prepare a place. Right? It's just like a, a, if I'm around here cleaning. And I know I got something to do with the Shabbat coming. I go to the store and I say, well, look, I'm about to go, uh, I'm about to do several quick games. I'm going to need this place to be done by the time I get back. Because what I'm about to bring back to it, complete. Right? <laughs> you know, it's the same thing. And so we have to look at it as, we have to look at the former days and where, what was good and what was bad. And where can we find the balance in that so we can do better? Yeah. Hmm? In us. Yeah, in us. You see, you had to say something? I, no, I said in ourselves. Yeah, in ourselves. Exactly. Exactly. So read that one more time, Mark. Job chapter 8, verse 8. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. Mm-hmm. For we are but of yesterday, and know nothing. And we are but of yesterday, but know nothing. You know, we got to get out of this mindset that we know everything and that we got the whole truth. Now, one person in this room, including me, got the whole truth. And this is why we got to come together, because you got a part, you got a part, you got a part, you got a part, I got a part. Shoot, the children may have a part that we don't know. But he said in the last days, the children shall see vision and signs. This is why we got to come together. For those who think we ain't got to come together, how you gonna, how you going to actually understand better if you don't come with your brother? Iron sharpening iron. So if you're not coming to me to a reason with your brother, how you ever going to learn? And this is why a lot of people lean on to their own understanding. Most people who want to go by themselves is really to their own understanding. Facts. You only got one part. So that means you're missing a lot of parts. And if we all supposed to be a piece of the body, you're missing the whole body. You got a total thing. You got the whole truth. <laughs> you got a piece of it. You got a piece of pie. And you have convinced yourself you got the whole pie. This is why we got to gather and rededicate ourselves to our people. Stop worrying about the dang heathen, man. They're going to get theirs, with or without you. You understand? So remember those days. Keep going. Because our days are upon earth are a shadow. Uh, what? Because our days upon earth are a shadow. Uh-huh. Shall not they teach thee? Shall tell- not who teach you? Your ancestors. Your forefathers and foremothers are going to teach you how to serve Yah through their mistakes and how they serve. I always use Dawi perfectly because he had a heart. For those who want to get down on themselves and beat themselves about sin, he committed one of the worst sins in the Bible that he had his most favor on. But I tell you what, creating you a clean what? Creating you a clean what? Come on now. Let the writings speak to you. You don't speak to the writings. Let them speak to you. What do you say? Ain't no private interpretation. It's right there. Ain't no such thing as different doctrine. We all got the same doc- doctrine, different perspectives. That's it. You got Genesis through Revelation just like I got it. It's just a different perspective. And a lot of times it's just people trying to make the scripture fit them. Them not fit the scripture. 
Okay? Okay. And you got to watch out for them people. Because they, they, they sit here and try to think that, that, that they above men. And ain't not one man above another. No matter what you got, you sin just like I do. Period. Now we learn from each other. We guide each other. We lift each other up. But there's only one king. And the name is Yehoshua Mashiach. So let's get to the story. Uh, man, right, let's, let's start. We got to go to the history. Of this. First of all, I, I, I did this, right? Like we said the Hebrew word for dedication is Kanukah, right? Kanukah. And so the Hebrew letters for that is Ket. We got Ket. We got Noom. We got Kof. We got Hes. And so I tell people in every Hebrew word, there's a prophetic meaning to it. And so for Ket, Cat means a tent, fence, or a wall. Overall, a cover, right? And you got noon, which means a seed, right? Some, somebody who has, has descended from something. And then you have cough, which means open hand or palm hand. And then you have hey, which means behold or revere. So the prophecy I got from this name was uh, the covering of the seed of Israel is revealed in the palm of Yah's hand. I'm going to say that again. The covering, ket, of the seed, noon, of Yisrael is revealed, uh, hey, in the palm of Yah's hand, cough. And this is what we have to understand. Our dedication is to receive, is to strive to receive Yah's cover. The prophecy, yeah. The covering of the seed, the covering of the seed of Israel is revealed in the palm of Yah's hand. You want to speak on that? <laughs> and so we got to understand, remember, we are Yah's portion. Okay? You, you don't belong to any other man except Yah. Do you understand that? So when we understand this, we understand now what dedication means. We have been ordained to a sacred position, but to give quality dedication. Some of y'all, some of us give half time. We want to give quantity. We can put in all the work, just like Cain. Yet Abel did the most simple thing and had the most quality. You see, Father did not make it this hard for us. We make it hard for ourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so tonight we're going to rededicate ourselves back to the Father in the most simplest way, which is what? Keeping the law, the commandments, and keeping our faith higher than it ever been before. Okay? okay? So let's get to it. 2 Chronicles 6 and 1. So I was reading, right? And for, uh, for a minute, I always thought dedication just happened during the time of, uh, of the Maccabee Revolt, right? Anybody know another time period when dedication happened? When they did dedication? Yeah. Uh, when David was trying to build a temple, but he couldn't. So he had too much blood in there. Here we go. What else? Too much blood. Even before that. Even before that. Right? So we got people who think we, we should not keep pieces of dedication. But all through scripture, you see our people keep it. Multiple times. Out of the mouths of two or three witnesses, that doesn't matter to be established, right? Okay. And so we're going to start in 2 Chronicles. Uh, 2 Chronicles, <clears throat> chapter 6, verse 1, yes. This is the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 6, verse 1. Then said Solomon, the Lord has said that he would dwell in the thick darkness, but I have built a house of habitation for thee, and a place for thy dwelling forever. And the king turned his face and bless the whole congregation of Israel. And who was the king? Shalom. Come on. And all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath with his hands fulfilled that which spake with his mouth to my father, Dawid. Right. Son. Like the brother just broke up. Remember originally, who was building it? Dawid. But he had so much blood on his hand, he was, never, he was not able to complete, right? Which tells us also, too, 
You obviously can't even do no priestly work being unclean. Right here, I mean, right here, I mean, it speaks to the prophetic nature of not no piece of dedication. I was just about to say, the hand of Yah revealed, you see, he has to return what he said he would do with our father. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he's saying right here, that is by his hand he fulfilled that which he spoke by his father. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So everything God does, he has to present that to our father that his word is true. Mm -hmm. so you know what I'm he, has to, he has to work you to present that which he said and he promised. So even this time, in the resurrection, I don't want to go too far, I don't to touch it. But even in the resurrection, God has to present us back because he said he's going to scatter to the four of the earth. But the remnant is going to be saved. So God has to produce a remnant to Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. He has to by way of the word, but he spoke by way of his hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see? Everything lines up. This is a prophetic book. This is a history book. This is a book of law, statutes, and commandments. There's not one thing that's not going to take you back to history. What we're going through now, we're actually speaking right now, talking about history. And I'm going to prove it. I guarantee everything they went through during this time of this Greek captivity is going on right now. Let's keep reading. Verse 5. Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt. Oh, so now he's telling him in this time. He keeps reverting back to where? Egypt. Why is that? Because that's the time he showed the whole world his power. He let the whole world know. You know why? Because at that time, Egypt was the strongest nation in the world. He let the whole world know that I'm the only Elohim on this earth. I went against all y'all gods, and not one could step in. This is your father. This is your father. Y'all should be proud of your father for stepping up for you like that. Cause a lot of our actual fathers don't do that for us. For some of us, right? Think about that. He's showing you, I got you. And this is why we have to exemplify brotherhood, cause we gotta have each other like he had us. He said, be ye perfect as your father. And the father never missed one beat or one step. Come on. I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel. He chose no other city. Come on. To build a house in, that my name might be there. Uh -huh. Neither chose I any man to be a ruler over my people, Israel. But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and have chosen Dawid, to be over my people, Israel. Mm -hmm. Now it was in the heart of God. Oh, did did y'all see that? Did y'all see that? Yeah. He went from saying, not, he never meant for a ruler to be over Israel, but he appointed David to oversee us. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there a difference? Mm -hmm. Well, we got men trying to rule over men mm -hmm. today. But well, he just said, right, he, he's not appointing not one man. To rule over us. So we gotta understand our role. Sometimes when we get out get our role. It's always been the king since the beginning. Brothers, y'all just co captains. You see, you overseeing sheep, but does that mean the main you the chief shepherd? No, not at all. We got folks out here thinking they Mashiach himself. Let the writing speak now. Let not no man speak to you without the writing. Come on. Verse 7. That it was in the heart of Dawid, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to Dawid, my father, For as much as it was in thine heart to build a house for my name, thou didst well, and that it was in thine heart. Mm. Notwithstanding, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son, which shall come forth out of, my, out of thy loins, he shall build the house for my name. Mm. The Lord therefore hath performed his word that he hath spoken. For I am risen up in the room of Dawid my father, and am set on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and have built the house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And in it have I put the ark, 
wherein is the covenant of the Lord that he made with the children of Israel. And he stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands. For Solomon had made a brazen, or a brazen scaffold of five cubits long and five cubits broad. Okay, now hop over to chapter 7, verse 7. Same, same book. Same book. Now, now we're going into, right? We're going into now Solomon um, has completed the temple, right? And as you see in history, this is the step that happened. We rebuilt the temple, we got the temple back. We went through decorating, as y'all see today. If y'all didn't know another name, the piece of dedication is called the Feast of Lights. Right? Mm -hmm. So look at that in that perspective of are we supposed to be the children of light? Mm -hmm. Look at that. And so when you go into the, when you explain the temple, all, all, all what was in the temple was gold. You understand this was a reflection of Israel within the body of Shia. You understand? We are supposed to be vessels of gold that's supposed to make this temple shine. You could not go into the tabernacle being unclean. You could not walk in the door being unclean. Right? You could not walk in the holy place with an unclean heart. And you damn sure couldn't walk in the holies of holies with blood in your hands. Do y'all see? It's starting to line up. So let's read. This is the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 7. Uh -huh. Moreover, Solomon hollowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But there he offered burnt offerings. Right. And the fat of the peace offerings, because the brassman altar which Solomon had made, was not able to receive the burnt offerings. Mm -hmm. Come on. And the meat offerings and the fat. Also, at the same time, Solomon kept the feast seven days. Right. And all Israel with him, a very great congregation, from entering in the Hamath onto the river of Egypt. And in the eighth day, they made a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days, and the feast seven days. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. so we see the account of Solomon keeping it, the feast of dedication, right? And now for time, say we're not going to go through it, but you can write it down, y'all write it down, you go through number seven. Just a quick summary of that. If you go through number seven, once we really had established the, the new tabernacle, the father had all the princes and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the top people in Israel from each tribe dedicated to the temple each day to the fulfillment of the, of the peace. You see? You go through number seven. You go, it's a long time. You go through it, you can see it. We can also go into John, John uh, chapter 10. You read verses 18 through 26. You'll also see Yehoshua also keeping the feast of dedication. So we see even our Messiah, who, for all those who say we believe in him, we see even he kept the dedication. So if it, if it was not meant to be kept, then why did he keep it? Why was it even mentioned? So when people can't answer these questions, again, people want to lean on to their own understanding. This is why you go with the right. This is why you study yourself. No matter if you got a moray, elder, captain, chief, whatever these titles is, you make sure you study yourself approved and you fact check. Because you will be a fool to just follow a man blindly. You understand? So let's get it. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 1. You got any questions before we start? Any comments? Yeah, first Maccabees. Anybody who, is anybody who don't got a pocket? First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 1. All right, heads up. It might not be good with these names. It's all good. All right, the book of First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 1. And it happened after that, Alex, Alexandros, son of Philip, the Macedonian, Macedonian, excuse me. Who came out of the land of Ketim. So I, have many of y'all heard of Alexander, and some people call him great. Mm -hmm. That's what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Some people call him Alexander the Greek. Mm -hmm. At this time, he was one of the most power, powerful kings, and it actually prophesied to Daniel, talking about this ring. Daniel chapter 8. You read Daniel chapter 8, it's, it prophesizes about Alexander. 
So this is why this is important that, you, first of all, you have these books. Because if you jump from Malachi to literally Matthew, you're missing 500 plus years of history. You're missing 500 plus years of information that ask people to get an understanding of why people call you the Gentiles. This is where the Gentile understanding started. Think about it. Before this, did you ever see the name Gentile? No. Or he? Stranger. So a stranger. So this term came, so they, they'll, you, they'll tell you in church you a Gentile, but they tell you don't read this book. <laughs> Where did you even get the name from? Right. right? These books were rejected, I believe, by the Roman Catholic Church, right? Yeah. They were rejected by uh, Roman Catholic and, and Constantine. Look up the history. You know why? Because this links you to the so-called Old Testament. This links your whole sure to the Old Testament. You understand? For those who you may be watching who, who not in the walk, you need this book to line up the pieces. This book is like a puzzle. You need all the pieces to put up the, put put a perfect puzzle together, right? Okay. Even one piece missing can change the whole game. And they knew this. This is why they changed words. This is why they tra transliterated, not translated, but transliterated your book. They didn't translate it because you. Hebrew is a unique language. Some words can't be translated. When you're going back to the Aleppo Codex, you look in there. They never changed the father's name. Why? Because they didn't understand how to actually translate it. When you look at Better Sheet, I keep always bringing this up. Yet they put in the beginning. But Better Sheet means in a beginning or a beginning. See, it, that's why it's important in all aspects of your culture, language, history, law, statutes, and commandments, that you seek and learn all this because it ties you into a bigger understanding. Okay? Damn. So Alexander the Greek is what we're talking about. You can look up the they, I'm pretty sure all those who went to school, y'all have heard this name, they did amazing this man. Great, great name. Great name, but I guarantee they didn't tell you about the Hebrew during it. They ain't tell you about what he really was. He was a, a, a homosexual, a freak. He was all types of stuff. You know what I'm saying? They ain't tell you nothing about that. But they want to say this man is great. This is what this type of society praises. That, that's, what they, that's what they consider great. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> that's what so, understanding that America was built on Greek custom, talking about making America great again. Right. Come on now. So let's get to it. Come on. Alright, uh, came out of the land of Kittim and had smitten Dar Yaish. You gotta speak loud, huh? Dar Yaish, uh -huh. king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his steed, the first over Yawan, and made many wars, and won many strongholds, and slew the kings of the earth and went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations, insomuch that the earth was quiet before him. Whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up. And he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. Right, start right there. You don't have down in verse 10. So this was a powerful man at this time. You know what I'm saying? He was a, he was a powerful man at this time. He was taking over countries, taking over kingdoms, Y'all have seen them old war movies. That's what they really did. And so a lot of the, the earth had feared this man. Even years right here. And we're going to see what type of... And I'm guaranteed, as we read, y'all going to see this society today. Even in the people in this walk, you're going to see them today. Based upon the story. Verse 10. Verse 10. And there came out of them a wicked root. Uh, Antichos. Surname uh, Epiphanes. Son of Antiochus, the king who had been so his real name is Antiochus. Antiochus, Antiochus. Mm -hmm. and, and it, in the Hebrew is uh, Antiochus, but but his name is Antiochus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who been who had been a hostage at Rome, and he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventy year of the kingdom of Greece. So this is the Greek kingdom. This is the Greek captivity that Israel went into. Those who write it down. 
This is the Greek captivity that Israel went into. As y'all know, Israel been in captivity seven times. For those who did not know, Israel been in captivity seven times. You understand? And I believe this is the fifth time. Yeah, fifth. Come on. Uh, verse 11. In those days went out there out of Israel a wicked man. Oh, so we see the same thing. In those days, we Israel still had wicked men. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, they ain't saying nothing about sisters, did they? They said Israel had wicked men. Because it was men who looked over the people. Come on. Who persuaded many, say. Who persuaded many. So hold on. These is, now let's get to it. Israel, men of Israel, persuading their own people. To what? Saying. Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen. Wow. Let us go make a covenant with the heathen. Forget our God. Let us make a covenant with them. Shoot, they got this much power that we see. You know, Israel always needs signs. We all need somebody, somebody in the flesh who look like power. You know, we lack faith in the spiritual thing. You know what I'm saying? Come on. That are round about us. But since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So this device pleased them well. Mm. Then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license. Oh, so he said, they, pre they presented this idea, but it was so many people's gut go on doing it. Shoot, they went to the king himself. <laughs> they didn't go to the brother who presented like, yeah, so what were you saying? You said we could do what? They said, yeah, we presented that. He on that. Let's go straight to the source. Come on. License to do after the ordinances of the heathen. Uh -huh. Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to Look the Look how wicked Israel is. They built a, what does exercise mean? A place to worship. Worship. We're exercising our faith right now, right? They was exercising their wickedness in the holy city that the Father has chosen. Now imagine we are. For those who got fathers, or you step, whatever, elders, yeah. and you go in this house and doing all types of stuff. You go in there with a Buddha, a Buddha, Buddha officer. He's like, shit, I mean, Trump promoted, so I mean, why not? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shoot. Brother Light wearing the unk, why not? Shoot, he was like, he know we talking about some smooth words. Why not? Come on. Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the Hebrews and made themselves uncircumcised. And made themselves uncircumcised. How do you get uncircumcised? Surely, in case if you were circumcised, <laughs> huh? let's go to that. Here's the Romans. You like to go there real quick? Romans 245. Let's see. Elder had asked a question. How do you become uncircumcised? Let's see. Oh. Let's see how you become uncircumcised. Romans 2 and 21. Yeah. This is the book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Thou, therefore, which teaches another teaches. I'm sorry, go to uh, 25. I don't know that. Verse 25. Romans chapter 2, verse 25. Verse 25. For circumcision barely profited if thou keep the law. So circumcision is keeping the law. We were just having this conversation earlier. Everything is spiritual and natural. There's not one thing on earth that does not represent the spirit. So for those who think it's just all natural, it's no hocus pocus as they put it. Even the very circumcision that you mean had got on the eighth day, or whatever you got, a lot of them did get on it. They got on prison, right? But for those who got the circumcision, that was a witness in the spiritual realm of your dedication to the Father, saying, "You shall keep all that He said." That was a custom of ours. Understand that? For those who did not know that, one of the customs was in the natural for all men. At the eighth day, must be circumcised. Must be circumcised. Who was the first person to do it? Our father, our father Abraham. At the age of 99. Gracious. <laughs> 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 
was having a little, a little talk about this once. I don't understand how you did that. Now, now I don't know if I can do that at 28. <laughs> that just showed the strength of our forefathers, right? Yeah. So, circumcision. So, circumcision is what? Again, what is circumcision? Keeping the law. I can't hear everybody. What is circumcision? Keeping the law. So, let's see what not, uh, what's uncircumcision. Come on. But if thou be a breaker of the law. Oh, no, it didn't say if you don't keep it, it said if you be a breaker. Oh, so you can be one of those. He the fringes and the best line earrings ever. But if you're a breaker of the law, you have not uncircumcised yourself. Come on, read it again. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Mm, keep going to the next verse. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of not those who are uncircumcised, those who are Israel but in a Gentile state of mind, if they now keep the law, then what? Shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? Did you say made circumcised? Uh huh. Say counted for. Counted for circumcision. Because he shut the righteousness of the law by being faithful. Oh, so he didn't just keep the law. He kept the righteousness of the law. Righteous and righteous by faith. Mm -hmm. uh, keep going up. Verse 27. It shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. Mm. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, Ooh neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. So what does that mean? Just because you circumcise in the flesh don't mean you circumcise in your heart. Right. Just because you wear fringes on the outer part don't mean you got the fringes in your heart. It starts with the inward man. And then the outward man is a reflection of the inside. A lot of us be trying to do this first. And then work on this. Well, you need to work on this first. And then make this be a reflection of what you look like on the inside. You know what I'm saying? Just like, think about it, vegan. When they go vegan... Wait, what's the first thing you notice about a vegan? Okay. Huh? Slim down, you know. down going well. Smiling all the time. Mm. Skin glowing all tight. Mm. You're like, man, what you been doing? Mm. Clean the inward man. It's just like in health. What you look like on the inside goes on the outside. You got pimples that mean your body's crying out from the sickness within you. You understand? This will reflect this. Not you wearing it, because this thing, you can wear all this and still look dark. Man. The Pharisees had nice garments. Oh, they had ink, they had it. Extremely long ZZs. <laughs> Extremely long. Well, I'm telling you, you be looking at a brother sometimes, bro. A little too long for me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that scripture. <laughs> You, you trying to prove me and you. <laughs> Come on. Go back to uh, 1 Maccabees. So we've been 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 16. See, so now y'all understand what circumcision is, right? Huh? Y'all understand what circumcision is? All right, just start inwardly or outwardly? Inwardly. All right, then. Come on. Verse 16. Go, first, uh, verse 16. Call out the whole book so everybody know yet. This is the book of 1 Maccabees chapter 1. Verse 16. Uh, now when the kingdom was established before Antichos, he thought to reign over Egypt, that he might have the dominion of two realms. Right. Wherefore, he entered into Egypt with a great multitude, mm. with chariots and elephants and horsemen and a great navy, and made war against uh, Ptolemy, Pol king of Egypt. But Talmai was afraid of him and fled and many were wounded to death. Mm -hmm. Thus they got the strong cities in the land of Egypt, and he took the spoils thereof. Right. And after that, Antichos had smitten Egypt. He returned again in the 140 and third year and went up against Israel and Jerusalem with a great multitude and entered proudly into the sanctuary and took away the city. He said he entered proudly. Come on. And took away the golden altar and the menorah of light and all the vessels thereof. Right, so 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 this captivity has taken you. You understand? You all have been made captive. 
And this captivity has not only hoodwinked you, but it has bamboozled you. What the, what the, uh, what, what the, uh, was it Hitler? What did he say? They have stolen the jewels of God. They was talking about you. You are those vessels. Now, yeah, they're talking about physically vessels, but you are that gold that was taken. You understand? Come on. Verse 22. In the table of the showbread, in the pouring vessels, in the vials, in the censers of gold, in the veil, in the crown, in the golden ornaments that were before the temple, all which he had pulled off. You yeah, guys ever wonder why they always went to the temple? Like, even during the real Roman city, why did he always go to the temple? Stash. Huh? That's where everything is stashed. Everything about us. Y'all gotta understand, this plan, what we're going through, they, they already had planned this 500 years ago. Six, seven hundred years ago. They knew this was going to happen. Why? Because they know our history. They knew exactly what to do and what to take to cut us off from being a what? A nation. Come on. That's our national treasure. And all of that is endemic of who we are as a people. If you are still a free people's culture, but what, what it was is really how should time. How should time take you the best when everything was actually set you. Time taking his authority over the earth. Because anytime anything that's reflected at the kingdom, you gotta remember that the pattern of the temple is actually in heaven. It's not in So it's just like when you, so think of the earth as a colony. The first thing you establish in the land is you set up an emissary, an emissary. An emissary. You set up, you take that ground anytime going to a foreign country.
the king sent his chief collector of tribute onto the cities of Judah, mm -hmm. who came onto Jerusalem with a great multitude mm -hmm. and spake peaceable words. Oh, man, look at this evening. <laughs> look at this evening. Ain't that what they always did? Christopher Columbus do the same thing? Yep. Spoke peaceable words. Oh, yeah, we want to make uh, treaties with you. <laughs> we want to do covenants with you. We want to be brothers, right? Spoke peaceable words. You don't bring all these people to speak peaceful words to me. You don't bring all these thousands of people to speak peaceful words to me. With weapons. With weapons. Shields and all. All types of stuff. Because during that time, it wasn't guns, it was swords. Right? But now they come to you, knocking on your window with the sirens on. I just want to talk to you. That's it. As you walk out, shoot them. You got them. As soon as you walk out, you try to grab your hand. Pop, pop. That's what they even do. They speak peaceful words, so they can what? Come on. Peaceful words onto them. But all was deceived. Well, all was what? Deceived. They said together, all was what? Deceived. Is this not the same anyone we still dealing with? Come on. For when they had given him credence, he fell suddenly upon the city. Oh, so just like we love everybody. You know. We think everybody loves us. They gave him pass. So they gave him pass. He went crazy. You know, he saw he, he, he thirsty for blood. He thrived for blood. He lives for war. You understand that? This beast that we're dealing with lives for war. We're not going to win by no other power except Elohim. Come on. And smote it very sore and destroyed much people of Israel. Give me Psalm 55 and 21. You stay there. Give me Psalm 55 and 21. And so now you see, this is what these demons do. This is what the demon do. He come in, sound all nice, sound all cool, talk about we brothers. Slip a few N words there. I mean, be cool. <laughs> and then he take you out. Y'all dealing with the same enemy. It's a different face. Come on. It's all three, five, and three, one. He has put forth his hands against such Psalms 55, verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. The war. Oh, we got all these folk things. Oh, oh, man, it, it's some good white folk out here. It's some good Arabians out here. Ask me, you reparations for all that blood that they still carrying in the, on that money. <laughs> Let's see if they give it up. Huh? All look good, huh? <laughs> Tell me you reparations. Tell them all y'all need jobs. Y'all start. You got families who born through diabetes. Come and give you a free checkup. Huh? Oh, they all good, huh? Their words are smoother than butter. Come on. But what was in their heart? But war was in his heart. But war was in their heart. That's all they do is war. They live for it. They got these six or seven year olds preparing right now to cut your head off. You shoot your children they ain't your women. What you gonna do, Israel? Huh? This is what the writers is for. Remember the former days. For they shall prepare you for what's coming. This is the same thing. Same thing. We read 2 Maccabees last time. About the woman with the seven children. Did they not feed us pork in slavery? Did they not force us? Do y'all see this? Is this not the same thing going on? Tell me if I miss you. Keep going. The war was in his heart. Uh huh. His words were softened in oil. Oh, y'all know how oil is. Well, oil, your skin, you feel good, feel it nice. Don't even see what's going on. Even know you put so much oil in, yeah. you messing up your cells. <laughs> Come on. Yet where they drawn swords. Yet where they what? Drawn swords. They what? Drawn swords. Come on, man. And we got brothers out here talking about don't protect yourself. Let the most high deal with it. You lack your faith and you got a gun. Man, I'm lacking faith and I want to protect my family out. No, I just sound like you stupid. And you is the same Israelite people who will let the enemy come in and destroy me and my family. That's how I take that. That's how I take that. Don't prepare for your enemy. Did not David say the most high has prepared my hands to what? War. War. Oh, I guess he was trying to do like faith. 
Yeah, he's one of the greatest men in the book. You see the ignorance some of our people got? Because a lot of them, honestly, behind these scriptures are still caught up in the world. They don't want, they don't want to fake their enemy one on one. Huh? They don't want to deal with what, what really comes with sticking up for your family and friends. Huh? No, nah, they don't want that. So they try to bait you, talking about you ain't got faith. Oh, well, we about to see a lot of faith in this book. Some of that, so the biggest problem we have is this year. Negro stand black and sinners. Because we would get dependent by the most high. We could actually win some damn war. Right. And you get Negroes actually fly right. <laughs> I'm saying, the enemy, you know. Let's look at the story. How did it start? So, yeah. Some cool niggas let them in. Yep. Right? Negroes who wanted to make covenant with them. Yeah. And really what they wanted to do, anytime you want to make covenant with the heathen, it's not about the heathen. You want to make covenant with the sin. Right. You don't want to make covenant with the man. You want to make covenant with the men do. Mm -hmm. Let's just be real. It ain't about white boys. It's about what the white boys seem like they do and get the property. You know what I mean? Their behavior. What their, 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 their cultural... No. You know? And so they're customs. The customs of the people. Are bad. Mm -hmm. You know? So that's the real problem. Okay. The problem is, is getting enough Hebrew men strong enough to actually hold the line when it comes to sin. Then we can actually fight and win something. Okay. You know? So that's why we've got to get out of this carnal mind and first deal with the real enemy. The real enemy is lawlessness. lawlessness. That's the enemy. Enemy number one. When one man fall behind and, and fall behind and get weak, he's the, he's the gateway. He's the entryway to the smooth words. Because he's compromised. His mind is compromised. So he'll be the one spread the spread the cancer of disbelief around. You know what I mean? Like, uh, He'll be the one to do it. Like, uh, brother, I don't know if you're Yeah. Right. Yeah. This one people who It'll always be cool, darling. It's always going to be there. Those ones that affect everybody else. Okay. Because they're compromised. Mm -hmm. So they will compromise, compromise up. Okay. And so with that, um, I don't, have y'all ever heard of a book, How to Make a Negro a Christian? It's a real book. Oh, wow. Real book. Oh man. Who's that? And so this is by uh, uh, Kam Kamua Makisi Tehuti. Pretty sure it's a hand mic. I don't know exactly. Well, how to make a Negro Christian? Right. My book. It's that one person, or actually is this this uh. It was actually the first white preacher in America. Right. He went he went around he went around um, examining and studying the slaves. Yeah. This is actually before it was wow. before it's a real it's a real manual on how to make a Negro Christian. Not to make a make a Negro slave, but make him Christian. And then justify why you're doing what you're doing with those answers. Wow. So uh, I wanna show y'all and we're gonna line this up with this book on how they use they, they controlled us. How they took away our culture and made it keep a strange law. So we're gonna read from How to Make a Negro a Christian, page nine. Right here. Yeah. All right. However, this is present day analysis of the power and the control of the Back during the time of this main thesis, infiltration and co-optation was not the strategy of the, of the day total banishment and destruction was. Since they couldn't understand our condition, all things historically that... So now they put it away so they said they couldn't understand. So they understood. We can go back to the book and talk about the Evos. They knew exactly how we received our power. So, i.e. they took the temple and stuff from the temple, right? So they knew exactly. So what they really said is because they did not like how we prayed, they did not like our culture and how we received our power. Understand that. They playing word games. Come on. 
all things historically that cockazoids cannot elicit power over and cannot enact control on. So what they're saying is anything that white people really couldn't control, which is really our praise, our praying, and us coming together, they could not like. They could not control it. Come on. Must be destroyed or at best pushed into a spur. What was the first thing destroyed in the black community? Man. Man. The family. The family structure was destroyed. So that's the first thing went out. Because that's what makes a man strong. If a man got a family, he's going to defend that family to the death. A righteous man, at least. Mm -hmm. So you say destroy the family, and we'll worry about everything else. Come on. Secondly, and on a whole different level, our system's limited. Limited only due to the changed environmental and social conditions. Yet increasing efficiency. Yeah, what? Increasing efficiency. Uh huh. Some cockroaches knew something was up when we would beat our drums and dance in certain ways. Y'all see we do that today, right? Mm -hmm. So when we start beating our drum and praying to the Most High, they knew what time it was. They knew somebody, somebody get shook up in the earth. Come on. While it may not have had the full impact it could have had. Um, had we not been extracted out of our own natural surroundings. Our what? Natural surroundings. We have not been pulled away from our own natural surroundings. Come on. Not fully knowing the spirits of the new inverts mm -hmm. and not being permitted to call upon them by traditional linguistic means. So they took away the name. You can't call upon your father's name. You can't pray to, to your father. Speak our language, they cut us off from that. That's why scripture say that. Anything translated from Hebrew to another language had not the same power. They knew that. Come on, what's the if, if there's no power in our tongue, why why even cut it off? Why stop us from doing it? From those, for those who think that our language don't matter, why, why, why would they do that? They know something, obviously, that we don't know. Go ahead, come on. Caucasus was nonetheless feared the African language. Oh, they what? Feared the African language. Now we know most people came over here was what? Hebrew. Mm -hmm. right. Come on. They feared drums and dancing. Banned them and killed violators. They banned them and did what? Killed violators. Let's kill anybody who wants to sneak around and do it. Come on. African spirituals undercurrents were the root of the most of enslaved. And I want y'all to take that, that thought. Anybody who kept their traditions, they killed. We're going to see if we see that here. We're going to see if we see that here. But I want to go into more detail what they did. Uh, page 11. Read on the top. Hey, everybody, listen up. I need you to speak out. Come on. It was this latter ritual of African religious practice that incited the most fear and hatred in the hearts and minds of the slave owners mm. and American white citizens. The slave owners learned only too well the efficiency of this power. As a result, an aggressive campaign was implemented to do away with African traditional religious well, practice. I mean, a whole campaign to do away with I mean, he was talking to all the slave owners around the country. Yeah, I'm saying, if y'all want to have no uh, uprising, no revolt, i.e. Matt Turner, yeah, y'all need to go ahead and uh, cut that tongue out. I need to go ahead and castrate it. Make them fear you. Yes. In, in the beginning of that book, they even talked about how the man that the white man that, that he's speaking off right now, so he can't just went around to different places in Georgia and Alabama and South Carolina, just literally repeating those words. Like you said. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying in the beginning. That he went around studying this and teaching people pretty much how to control himself before Willie Lynch was this man. Come on. Um, once and for all, heavy fines were often levied. Heavy fines. Well, we know what that means. He ain't charging no money. We ain't got no money, dude. What you charge them? They charge me limbs and blood. Come on. Brutal forms of torture 
uh, severe beatings and even death was imposed on anyone taught practicing any form of the religion. This is what they did to you. Come on. Stringent laws were passed to prevent the Africans from speaking any African languages, building shrines, making ritual drums, or any musical instruments. Family members and neighbors were encouraged to report one another if caught practicing any form. Here go your other coons! You gonna always find a coon in trouble, man. You gonna always find a coon. This is why you gotta be careful who you got surrounding you, even in these last days. They will sell you out. They will sell you out. Just to get a game, just to get a dollar, or get their name out there. You gotta be careful, man. This is why the scripture say they just to yeah. say that like you don't want no trouble around here, boss. Why you bring all that trouble around here? Hey, just to get killed later. Just, kill. just to get killed later though. Right. <laughs> Oh, you, oh, you snitched on me just to stay alive three more weeks. Right. Yeah? And you see that today is why scripture says you got to prove, man. You got to prove people, man. You got to prove people. People have you doing all types of weird stuff. You ain't hooked to it. You know what I'm saying? And they're, they're turning against you in our people. Just because you may not agree. Oh, that brother often, we don't agree. Oh, he ain't, he ain't in the right places. You don't agree with us. Yes. So, um, what is this? Is a question. So, to answer, um, so like for instance, so my elder, right? If he proved somebody, is that enough? Yeah, I mean, as long as you went through the process of proving him first, and you 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 truly trust in his opinion, and, and you know he got a, a good spirit of discernment, that's key. You can be a good man without good discernment. As long as you got good discernment, yeah, you can. I think that goes hand in hand too about a man's name. Well, he was asking like, if, if so you talking about a, a, a brother, right? You know, a brother, right? You talking about if, 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 if me, you know, maybe a brother you attend to one country, let's use an example, one country, right? And you saying, could you use elder to prove that man worthy of coming in? Right. Basically, if you knew the guy, you brought him here. Like, we all just, because it's your name and your name, you know what I'm saying? We all assume that that guy is good because you brought him here. You're the elder. I think that's what I'm assuming. I am. that. that. It could be a Look at we, we, the Shiite gives us, the, he gives us the key to it all. Study a tree by its fruit. Look at what they do versus what they say. Look at their consistency. Look at their, you know what I'm saying, their behavior. Look at what they do. They're contrary to the scripture. You will know. Something in the scripture is going to, the scripture is life. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about perfection. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about somebody being perfect. Mm -hmm. You're not going to find somebody being perfect. Okay? But look at when they get caught, how they deal with stuff. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right. And they be accountable. Can, you know, because there's, there's, if somebody does something wrong and they get stuck and then they can't be accountable, then you know that this person has a, a character flaw. Okay. You see what I'm saying? If they got that type of character flaw, then you know that they can be compromised. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. And all it takes is somebody to come from the inside and come in and be like, yo, they study the weekly week. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These draconian laws, which continued unabated until well after Reconstruction, included prohibitions against organizing in public and any other method by which the slave owners suspected they might be working their magic. You do a magic now, huh? That's how they describe it. You're right, black magic. Come on. Many priests and priestesses were murdered. You what? Priests and priestesses were murdered. Uh -huh. Some escaped up yeah. north. Mm. Thousands resisted and continued their practices underground, forcing a once historically open and proud religious cult uh, religious cultural tradition. Mm. Develop the undeserved reputation of being dark and sinister. So and now we praise the Father. Now we are sinners. We the sinners. We the ones to say that. See that? 
for those who think we don't do spiritual things. We've been doing spiritual things. It's been in us. How you call yourself Judah and think you want to do spiritual things? By definition of the name, it means you praise. You praise your what? Your mouth. So obviously you sing and you call upon the Father's name. Come on. This, these medieval and unconstitutional laws were so successful that in less than one generation, the many priests and priestesses who were not murdered were forced to practice underground and the new generations of enslaved Afro, uh, di di it's so it's, 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 it's diaspora. Di yeah, diaspora. Had developed a learned Afro hagophobia. What hagophobia? Let's see what hagophobia, Afro hagophobia is. Come on. A pathological fear and irrational intimidation of African spiritual and esoteric science. And so this is the problem with a lot of our parents. They don't understand. They had an uh, Afro uh, pathological uh, thing going on. They try to. They they always tell you, well, it doesn't matter what you what, what you. It doesn't matter. The book don't matter. We don't have to do that. What does it matter? We're all the same. We all bleed the same. That's all a sickness within them that was embedded in, in their system 400 years before they even hit earth. You see? So all they doing, all they got is a syndrome that has been passed down for generation to generation. Mm -hmm. Come on. And so say, you, I'm sorry, that's why I said you got to have compassion for people. Sometimes they don't even know what they're talking about. When you get down to the nitty gritty, they really don't know what they're talking about. They're just going off emotion and they're going off uh, autopilot of, of slavery. That's it. Come on. Ancestral veneration and its ritual and cultural expressions. Uh -huh. The simplest spirit manifestations that were once understood in their cosmological uh, context now spooked mm -hmm. the newly conditioned generations of African Americans. Now what? Tradition. Now spooked the new generation. And this is what we're going through today. This is why we have a problem accepting the truth. We're scared of what comes with it. We scared of what comes with it. And I understand, because what comes with Father Christ is persecution. Some of us who say we are the truth scared of that. So I get it. I get it, but this is the same condition we see going on here. We'll be done with that. I don't want this book, but for time's sake, this is another good book. It's called Religions of the Hellenistic Rome Age. Very good book. It breaks down every religion you can think about and tells you the time period when it starts, what king or, 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 or group it came from, and how it all started. And this goes in great depth about Alexander the Greek and how he took up books, how he, how he not only did he translate, but they uh, transliterated. And how they even said that they, they put words in there because they could not figure out how to translate certain words. So it's a very good book to have. It's called... Religions of the Hellenistic Rome Age. This it is by WMB uh, Erdman's. Very good book. You want to understand these different, these different uh, views of religion? Very good book. I guarantee you. Well, if I could add to that, uh, it doesn't, not just religions, but the effects that Hellenism had on different religions. Because mm. the purpose of Hellenism is to actually go and superimpose its culture and religion over other cultures and religions. So that way, it almost like diluted, but it was almost like, um, for, like almost like integrated into it. So you would still have a little bit enough of your culture in it to where you're like, you're like you're you feeling like you're still practicing your original religion, but Hellenism, what it does is it comes in and actually imposes this religion over and affects it. So it's actually more dangerous than any other religion because mm -hmm. it allows you to keep some of your stuff just enough to where you can identify with some of your cultural norms, but it infuses, but it makes sure that it puts its. This is where I'm with. Make sure it puts its influence as a primary rule over. Dang. Right. It's primary rule over your own religious or cultural norms. Mm -hmm. So it's real deep, and that's what we're really under right now is Hellenism. Mm -hmm. That's why, like, sometimes you have a hard time fighting with uh, comedic Negroes that be like, the black Bible, the Bible's made by white men. You know what I mean? No, it's been Hellenized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you see what I'm saying? So, no, 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 no. 
to add to that, they'll tell you in this book that they took our book. This book right here, this is the action as far as English versions. Uh, this is probably a, a more pure English version than any book. Uh, in some cases, even 1611. Um, this was the book they created. It's called the Greek Septuagint. The reason I get these type of books, I, mean, I, I keep telling people, just like as, as you keep getting these newer versions of the Bible, what's happening? You get less of the truth. You get more books taken out. Now, when you do it the, now you do, when you do it the forward way, and you go back more, you get more books, and you get more truth. If you think you're about to get all the truth in 66 books, you're a fool. If you think you're about to get all the truth in 80 books, you're a fool. But it does give you a basis and ground. You understand that? But as you go, if you go in here, it's different wording than the King James Version. Which one came out first? This. Uh, I was going to say, um, the, I'm paraphrasing the, the verse where it talks about Solomon, where he says he's black and hungry and beautiful. Mm -hmm. So in like the NIV, it says, I'm tan. Mm -hmm. You see that? I'm tan. Yeah, we know that that, that color didn't have nothing to do with it. It's speaking of the white representing the splendor. Mm -hmm. right. It didn't have nothing to do with the skin color. Right. Right. By the splendor of his, actually he had a glory on him. He had a shine. Right. So, but if you don't know the scripture contextually, you will be misguided by it. But so yeah. the superimposition of it. In other words, like the Romanist, Greekish ideals of Christianity was superimposed on the scripture. But if you just look at, if you look at what Mashiach did, he's literally evil. You know what I mean? He's literally an Israelite. Let me read the scripture. You'll see he kept all his traditions, but it's the superimposition of the philosophy of Christianity that changed the ideas of the Bible. But when you actually read the Bible, you will see that, hold on, and that's what all the revelation we all come into as Israelites like, Yo, he literally says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yeah. But this is what you see what I'm saying? But then when under under Hellenism, your mind is twisted. You're thinking that, oh, his commandments is love. No. Like what does that mean? Right. Love, love. See, I got it. I wasn't gonna go into it, now you should, I gotta go into it. I gotta go into some, some part of it. So it says this. The translation of the Hebrew Torah into Greek introduced Greek concepts. Into Jewish thought. Indeed. Although the original translators endeavored to render the text as literally as possible, Hebrew words and I do, uh, I do, uh, I do or I don't know how you say that, but that had no Greek equivalent or concepts that were uh, uh, were obscure, were interpreted and elucidated. With Greek, with Greek, the language of the Bible and the synagogue. And its influence on Jewish literature, the diaspora Jews gradually began to assimilate the Hellenistic ideas and concepts and attempted to understand the scripture under the influence of those ideas. That's it. They, That's in, they, inter, they, uh, they in, uh, interpreted the scriptures in allegory, allegorically and discovered, discovered in them the deepest philosophical, philosophical. And, philosophical and metaphysical truths. Al, uh, Oh, I'm sorry. The interpretation of the scriptures was a distinctive literature product of Alexandrian Judaism. Alexandrian Judaism. That's what it is. So when you look at they did the Kimmin as well. They went to Ptolemy, all of them went, and they spread the philosophy of, 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 of Greek Hellenism. And that's what it was. It's almost like an admixture. It's like it, and it's Hellenistic, you know what I mean? So like even what we're dealing with right now, a lot of us still have a Hellenistic concept. Right? And we've struggled with that, even in our everyday identity. Because No, I'm just saying, like, yeah, yeah, I'm done. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, isn't that really how Hashita works though? I mean Hellenism basically what it is is you're, you're mixing Truth of life. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, right. But they successfully did it because you got to think about it when in the ancients they were going to tear down other deities. They'll literally go in and tear down that and then set up their deities in that land. And they they know their deities become the chief rulers, right? Yeah, yeah. But what Hellenism did, it didn't totally do it. It just it mingled. 
understand. It is huge. And their concepts and the ideas, and lots of times they say we're well, we read the book of Maccabees and they change the image. Yeah, that's not the image. The image they change was the ideas and concepts. Because the scriptures didn't have pictures in it. You know what I'm saying? So it didn't have like literally put Greek images in there. No, the images were the idols. Or the behind all the idols, there is a doctrine of that idol. So they infused the they infused the image of their deity, which was the doctrine of their deity, into the text. The concepts. And so you see the same thing. We went from the most recent slavery and compared it to this slavery, Greek captivity. It's the same repetitive thing that goes through. Get back to it. 34. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 34. Come on. Verse 34. Uh -huh. And they put therein a sinful nation, uh -huh. wicked men, and fortified themselves therein. Uh -huh. They stored it also with armor and vehicles. And when they had gathered together the spoils of Jerusalem, they laid them up there, so that they became sore snares. Uh -huh. For it was a place to lie in wait against the sanctuary of Yahweh and an evil adversary to Israel. Mm -hmm. Thus they shed innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary and defiled it. Mm. Insomuch that the, inhabit the inhabitants of Jerusalem fled because of them. Right. Same thing we see who happened in Roman stage, right? Same thing. They would sack the temple and fled into the mountains. History repeats itself. So if y'all think me about the fight, Hmm. Come on. Whereupon the city was made an inhabitation of strangers and became strange to those that were born in her. Mm. Wow. That's great. Mm. Mm. That's great. And her own children left her. Mm. I know who you heard it, right? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Come on. Her sanctuary was laid waste like a wilderness. Huh. Her feast was turning into mourning. Her feast was turning into mourning. Come on. Her Shabbat into reproach, her honor into contempt. Mm. As had been her glory, so was her dishonor increased, and her excellency was turned into mourning. Mm. Moreover, King Antichos was wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. Oh, all should be one people. And always trying to make what does that mean? What does that mean? Integration. Integration. <laughs> We should all be under the same law, same president, on the whole structure. Come on. Verse 42. And everyone should leave his Torah. Oh, everyone should leave their instructions. Come on. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandments of the king. Yea, many also of the children of Israel consented to his customs and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. And profaned the Sabbath. Y'all see what's going on. We sold out our nation. This is y'all history. This is what you got to know, because the same thing is going to happen again. Y'all know that. The same thing is going to happen. It's going to have some cool, cool niggas around. going to sell you out for that, that cornbread and that bean pot. Oh, and that pork. Come on. Verse 44. For the king has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange Torah of the land. Strange Torah of the land. Come on. And forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings uh. in the temple and that they should profane the Sabbath and festival days. So that's why you got people talking about you ain't got to keep those feast days. You ain't got to keep no Sabbath. What's wrong with Christmas? Why you don't do Halloween? What's wrong with Valentine? What's wrong with Valentine? <laughs> it's just a dead look. But you know what else though? When they do say that, I think it was in Colossians when he said don't bank, don't um don't judge a man by his feasts or his uh his Sabbath yeah, They try to use that too. Uh, they like, try to flip it up. Yeah, they try to use that with his holidays, but like what feast right. are they talking about? You know? Exactly. You know, what holy day. Well, holy day. Yeah, exactly. You know. We know uh, Christmas ain't holy. No, it's not. Right. Right. They, got, they ain't got nothing to do with Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah, actually go into the writings, you know right. exactly when, or at least the, the time period when Christ was born. Yeah. And it had to either be spring or fall. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, from my understanding, it was, it was around fall time. Matter of fact, it was around uh, tabernacle. Oh, yeah. Come on. Verse 45. 
verse 46. And pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols. And sacrifice swine's flesh. And unclean Sacrifice beef. swine's flesh. You know what's crazy? If you actually go into some history on Christmas, which is called Saturnalina, this was actually a sacrifice that they did. They would sacrifice pigs on the altar. You look this up. On that day, they actually would sacrifice swine. Where did they get this from? You see it right here. Greek customs and ideas. Come on. And unclean beasts. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable uh, with all manner of uncleanness and uh, profane profanations. To the end, they might forget the Torah and change all the ordinances. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. In the selfsame manner wrote he to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people, commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. That many of the people were gathered unto them, to wit everyone that forsook the Torah, and so they committed evils in the land. In their own land. This is why the land is defiled, not because the Gentiles are trying it down. We don't want to defile the land. We the ones didn't take care of the garden. It was us. Come on. Verse 53. And drove the children of Israel into secret places, even wheresoever they could flee for security. Now the 15th day of the month, Keslu, in the 140 and 5th year, they set up the abomination of desolation upon the altar of Mosai, and built its idol altars throughout the cities of Judah on every side of the and burnt incense at the doors of their houses and in the streets. And when they had rent in pieces the books of the Torah of Mosai, which they found, they burnt them with fire. Mm, they done burnt all right. It took y'all right. It took everything. This is why some of our history is gone. If y'all ever wonder why we can't understand everything, we only understand one part because we really only got one part. Or something, right? Come on. Verse 57. And whosoever was found with any any of the book of the covenant of Yahweh, or if any committed to the Torah, the king's commandment was that they should be put to death. Did we just not read that in the book? How to make a Negro Christian? Anybody was practicing these customs and put to death. Come on. Verse 58. Uh -huh. Thus did they by their authority over the children of Israel. Every month, two as many as were found. Now watch that. What did I just say originally? What happened on the 25th day? On Saturday, what was sacrificed? What? Let's see, let me see that scripture. Come on. Verse 59. Now the five and twentieth day of the month. Oh, the twenty-fifth day of the month. Come on. They did sacrifice upon the upon the idol altar, which was upon the altar of Yahweh. Disrespect. They sacrificed these beasts and the foul animals on the on on the on the altar of the Father. How much more disrespect can you can you do? That's how they felt about you, Israel. They're going to profane your Sabbath, your temple just like that. And we glad to let them do it. Come on. Verse 60. At which time, according to the commandment, they put to death certain women mm. that had caused their children to be circumcised. Man, look. So now we're going to the women. Yeah. First the wicked man sold himself, but now the women got to get us circumcised. Ain't these the same women who saved us in Egypt? We getting killed? Throw all the men child to the alligators. Who's the one who saved them? You see why we gotta we gotta we gotta get back to respecting one another because we all play a important part. When the men couldn't do it, who we had to step up? The women. Let's just be real. This is why brothers gotta play their role. Because that's what women do. We just talk about that what women do. The man not doing his job, what they start doing, Elder? Oh, you just spoke of it. They start having to step up and do it. They're going to survival mode. They're going to survival mode. This is what these sisters did. 
So we in survival mode right now. We gonna be the ones who uh who do it right. So they got this child circumcised. Come on. Verse 61. When he when he's about to read, it sounds like what happened in the sixth. Mm. Verse 61. And they hanged the infants about their necks and rifled their houses mm. and slew them that had circumcised them. Does that sound like today or at least recent time? Mm. Same thing, man. Come on. How be it? Many, how be it? How be it? Many in Israel were fully resolved in the Torah of Yahweh and confirmed in themselves not to eat any unclean thing. Uh -huh. Wherefore, the rather to die, that they might not be defiled with meats, that, and that they might not profane the covenant of Yahweh. So then they died. And there was very great wrath upon Israel. Right. Father said, who, who, who will rise up for me against the evil group? Somebody got to do it. And we got a choice if we're going to be that remnant that's refined in gold, or are we going to be the ones to sell our nation out for, for whatever reason at that time? Because that time is coming. You're going to have to make a choice. If you're not preparing yourself now, what are you waiting on? Who's actually preparing yourself now? Raise your hand. Who got something to take themselves with? Huh? Who actually knows something to take themselves Huh? Raise your hand. Ain't that many hands up. Why is that? Truth be told, you run out of bullets. Who's prepared to suffer for the man of Yahweh? Hey, that's real. Right there. <laughs> Who's prepared to die so that the people can get away? Who gonna take that on the chin? A lot of us be talking about we ready to die. Until that time comes. Until that time comes. For real. Y'all think that? I I, I seen it myself, brothers. <laughs> A lot of us say we be ready to die until that time comes. Look at y'all, y'all ain't fighting to protect y'all women. <laughs> 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 Let's be honest. Because y'all never been asked to you. I bet you go talk to them, because they ain't going to mess with you. A lot of y'all going to push it. You and your women in self-defense, <laughs> talk about you on your own. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they hard, they hard on us men, baby. Yeah, you going to come to the brother and make some excuse you talk about, I'm trying to defend him, but she's going to be a stick <laughs>
when it was delivered into the hand of the enemy and the sanctuary into the hand of the stranger. Her temple is become as man without work. Hold on. I already read this story, and this guy always learned something new. Read the scripture. And so I saw it, and, I, and I, I just saw it today. I said, that's profound. He said, her temple is as a man without his glory. Who's the glory of man? Come on, she out. And so that put him, damn, you know, all you brothers don't believe in she out. You just like the temple as if it's, uh, if it's clean. You have no covering, no glory. So get that from the first Peter 5 and 9. This is, book, this is the first book of Peter, chapter 5, verse 9. Yeah. Whom, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Oh, and in your brethren in the world, come on. But the Elohim, all great, who have called us unto his eternal glory by, by Mashiach Yoshua. Mm -hmm. After that, ye have suffered a while. Yes, Make you perfect, established, faithless, strengthened, <laughs> and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's our glory. He said, oh man. Is this just like a temple? like a man without his glory. So that just was profound to me. Because like, so we were really the gatekeepers of the temple. We were the ones to protect the temple. And now we have put shame and allowed the temple to lose its glory. And that's the same one today. We ain't got no physical temple, but we are the temple. We are the parts of the temple. And so every time each one of us go off, you are shaming your people. Do you understand that? When you go off and sin, you are literally shaming your people who are a representation of the temple, and the temple is a representation of the body, in which we are all part of the body of Mashiach. Okay? Uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and 17. 3 and 17. No, uh, Zakari, 1 Corinthians 3 and 17. First, uh, book First Corinthians three and seventeen. If any man defile the temple of Elohim, him shall God destroy. From the temple of God is holy. Which temple you are? Which temple you are? You are. If y'all got a problem with some addictions, we'll stop you defiling the temple. Shoot, you sin. That's more of an addiction than anything. You defiling your temple. Because each and every one of y'all are vessels that we all need to build the temple. Y'all got to start looking at it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we walk by ourselves. We, we got to work out our own salvation. That's cool and all. But you're still a representation of the nation. Why? Because that's how the Father judges anyway, by nation. So y'all got to think about that. Think about when you about to say, think of your people. What's the point of you wearing, wearing fringes? You got all the fringes. Think about how, how many people you live now. That's what the, each friend represents. Everybody in your nation is ready now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 15, come on. 15. Yeah, we're back in 1 Maccabees chapter 2, verse 15. 1 Maccabees chapter 2, verse 15. Uh -huh. In the mean, while the king's officers, such as compelled the people to, to transgress the Torah of Yahweh, came into the city, Moses, to make them sacrifice. And when many of Israel came unto them, many Yahu also and his sons came together. Then answered the king's officers and said to many Yahu on his wives, Thou art a ruler and an honorable and great man in this city, and strengthened with sons and brethren. Now therefore come thou first, and fulfill the king's commandment, like as all the heathen have done yea and the men of Judah also, mm. and such as remain at Jerusalem. And so that's how they're going to influence you. Come on, man. Come on, let's go ahead and do it. Everybody Shoot, yo, everybody, yeah, everybody else doing it. Your brother's doing it. What's wrong too? Why you ain't doing it? Why you being all uptight? Come on, everybody else doing it. Let's go, go. But come on, man. Get it. Break the side, man. We ain't been doing that either. Ain't reading the scriptures. Some of y'all probably here. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> you're right. You know you're right about that. <laughs> yeah. That's the truth. I was like, go get you. Gonna be guy you just like that. When you at your weakest moment, he's gonna seduce you just like that. Come on. So shalt thou and thy house be in the number of the king's friends. And thou and thy children shall be honored with silver and gold. That's how they try to seduce them. That's why you got all these artists selling out their souls. Do we give you money? Do you rich? Do we give you women? We make sure you have enough women to have children. Proverbs 3 31 said, What? Amy not the person to choose what? No, not ways. These writings is here for a purpose. And so pretty much, uh, hop down to verse 38. We're going to be hopping, hopping there with you. Verse 38. Come on. Book of Maccabees, or 1st Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 38. Uh -huh. So they rose up against them in battle on the Sabbath. Oh, the so they rose up against them. I'm sorry, verse 31. I'm sorry, 31. 31? Yeah. Okay, verse 31. Now, when it was told the king's servants and the host that was at Jerusalem. Give me, give me Luke 22. Uh, give me Nehemiah 13. And one of y'all give me Ecclesiastes 28. Come on was at Jerusalem in the city of Dawid, that certain men who had broken the king's commandment were gone down into the secret places in the wilderness. They pursued after them a great number, and having overtaken them, they camped against them and made war against them on the Sabbath day. Mm. On the Sabbath, now listen to this. Now we got brothers out here talking about some, again, don't defend yourself, have faith that the most high will deliver you. We got some people say they won't fight. They won't because it's a side. We can't do nothing. They that extreme. We can't do nothing. We ain't we ain't, we ain't gonna fight on the side. So it was a Sabbath day. They came to your territory to, to, pro, to profane your Sabbath. Come on. Verse thirty three. And they said unto them, Let that which ye have done uh, hither, hitherto suffice. Come forth, and according to the commandment of the king, and ye shall live. But they said. We will not come forth, neither will we do the king's commandment to profane the Sabbath day. Mm. Okay. So then they gave them the battle with all speed. Howbeit, they answered them not, neither casting stone at them, nor stopped the places where they had they were they hid. Mm. But said, Let us die all in our innocency. <laughs> Heaven and earth will testify for us uh, that ye put, that that ye put us to death wrongfully. Come on, verse. So they rose up against them in the battle on the Sabbath, and they slew them with their wives and their children and their cattle, to the number of thousand people. So y'all, some brother will let their family die. Oh, what was the faith? That was faith, right? Yet, yeah, how did your wife get killed? How did your children get killed? If you were called to be an ish, which means you say you will be a strong defense for your house, and it's your duty to protect your people. You were called a husbandman, which means you were built to protect and nurture this very soil or, or ground or section that you were ordained to keep. So how can you not protect the very thing that you were ordained to keep and protect? Y'all see where that, that narrative can go? Why would you let that happen? Oh, it's a Sabbath day. This is why, this is why the, uh, the Messiah said what? Uh, is it, it, it bad to do, do good on the Sabbath? Oh, so I'm supposed to let myself starve. I ain't got no food. That's the extremities that we go with this when you got Pharisees inside of food. Oh, oh, you, oh, you want to eat the food without washing your hands? <laughs> Yet you don't know how to watch, watch the inward part of a cup. Y'all hmm. see how it can be uh, uh, hypocrisy mm -hmm. over righteousness. That's what brothers be on nowadays. Over righteousness. I'm going I'm to let my faith save you. Okay, brother. That, that's you. And that, that's totally fine. I have nothing against you for that. Most I bless you in that day when it comes. Faithful God word. But then, then, then you want to fight your brothers, though. Yeah. You'll fight your brothers pretty quick. <laughs> oh, you tough. You tough with your brothers, but the enemy come. Uh, right, you you tough with your brothers, but the evil come. You're, yes, sir, master. You, I, I'm doing it for the righteousness of the Lord. But then the the Mashiach say, if your enemy, which he was talking about your brother, 
strike you on the right cheek, give him what? Your left cheek. Oh, okay. What was your faith then? You got, you got to beat him up now. You got to protect yourself then. It's stupid. It's hypocrisy. And that's what we're living in, hypocrisy today. Hop down to verse 38. Verse 38. So they, we're going to cut some of So pretty much what, what was, uh, was, was going down um, is, is Judah Maccabees, he rises up now. Him and his brothers rise up and say, look, we, uh, we, yeah, we're not going to do that. We ain't just going to let nobody come up in our house no more and do anything. It's not going to go. Other references where you see our people standing up, write this down. You can go to Luke 22, verses 35 through 38. Did not Mashiach himself tell you what? You ain't got no sword, do what? Yeah. Sell your garden. And then he could say, oh, you got two swords? Cool. Cool. Because two is better than one. So you see even Mashiach telling you to protect yourself and prepare yourself. Sell your garment. You also can go to Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 13, verses 16 through 21. He told him, well, y'all gonna come on the side of uh, profane. He said, you come back, I'm gonna lay my hands on you. I'm gonna lay my hands on you. Oh, I guess he ain't had no faith. He had faith in them hands, though, didn't he? <laughs> he had faith that Mashiach was gonna have his hands intact, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, verses 35 through 30, 38. And again, so you got you got uh, Nehemiah 13, verses 16 to 21. Nehemiah said, I'm going to lay my hands on you. You come back on here on, on this gate, on this side of town this time, I'm going to lay my hands on you. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 13. Matter of fact, let's just go to it. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 16. That's how you know we were some. It was black people. Only black people say that. I'm going to lay my hands on you, boy. I'm going to put my paws on you, boy. <laughs> hey, somebody give me Nehemiah 13. You say where you at. Somebody give me Nehemiah 13. You got it out? Start. Yeah, verse 16. Come on. There dwelt men of Tyre also therein, which uh -huh. brought fish in all manner of rare, and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah uh -huh. in Jerusalem. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, mm. What evil thing is this that ye do and profane the Sabbath day? Did not your fathers thus? And did not our God bring all evil upon us and upon this city? Right. Yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. So Nehemiah already hit me, so hold on. I already know what this brings. When we break the Sabbath and go off, the Father bring evil to us. And yet you want to bring evil at our doorstep? Nah, bruh. It can't even go like that. I already know what time it is. Did that happen? Come on. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded that the gates should be Hold shut. On. Go back real quick for those, you know, keep the gates out. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath. Oh, hold on. Before, oh, the, Sabbath, before the Sabbath. Before the Sabbath, it was, it was beginning to go dark. Oh, read that one more time for me, y'all. Read that one more time for me. It came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem. Huh? It was a side note for those who like to keep dates out. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Come on. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath. Before the Sabbath began to be dark before the Sabbath. Come on. I commanded that the gates should be shut. Oh, so now. He's closed the gates for no other outsiders to enter in. Come on. In charge that they should not be open till after the Sabbath. Oh, till after the Sabbath the gates shall be open. Come on. And some of my servants sat at the gates that there should no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. Oh. Uh. So, so, keep going. So where the where merchants. Where you at? Where you at? Oh, yeah, keep going. So the merchants and sellers of all kind of wear lodged without Jerusalem once or twice. Then I testified against them. What did he say? And said unto them, What? Why lies ye about the about the wall? Uh-huh. If you do so again. If you do so again, what? I will lay hands on you. I'm gonna lay what? I will lay hands on you. I'm gonna lay what? I'm lay hands on you. So what y'all gonna do when your enemy come at your gate? Come on, man. The 
problem is some of y'all ain't never been smacked in your face, man. Y'all ain't never had to defend yourself. That's the problem. But the enemy covered whether you like it or not, whether you hear or forbid. This judgment on Israel is coming. What you gonna do? Huh? They just made Judaism a nationality. They just said, Yahweh Shah is coming is an anti-Semitic sign. <laughs> yeah, he's a Shemite. Come on now, man. They declare war in your face. My, my wife just told me the FDA said they're going to they about to allow any type of thing in food now. They ain't going to have no blocks. And only one man going to be in charge. When it comes to the food, you know, FDA approve all food. So now it don't matter. They can put anything they want in there. Any, in, anything they want. It used to be nine people over the food who, who uh, allowed or checked to see if things were good. Now it's only going to be one. And they allow anything to go. Anything. They declare war on every part of your survival. What you going to do, brothers? Huh? What you gonna do? Verse 37. We have back in 1 Maccabees. Go to 1 Maccabees chapter 30, chapter 3, verse 37. This is the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 37. Uh -huh. What time is it? First, come on, we all have done. So the king took the half of the forces that remained and departed from Antioch, his royal city, the hundred and forty and seventh year. And having passed the river of Karath, he went through the high countries. Then Lizaz chose Tawi, the son of Dorimon, and Nicanor, mighty men of the king's friends. And with them, he sent 40,000 foot men. Ooh-wee! Come on. And 7,000 horsemen to go into the land of Judah and to destroy it. They coming at y'all doorstep. What y'all gonna do? Come on. As the king commanded. So they went forth with all their power and came and pitched by the most in the plain country. And the merchants of the country, hearing the fame of them, took silver and gold very much for service and came into the camp to buy Hebrew slaves and power also of Aram and of the land of Philistine joined themselves so now the, 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 the war has arised, right? The, rebe the revolt, right? And so now, to make an example, they're killing off Hebrew slaves. What did we see that at? Huh? Did we not see that in the birth of the nation? Yeah. Oh, Nat Turner wants to revolt? Oh, until we capture this nigga, everybody here going off. <laughs> everybody here going off. Child, women, and men. Everybody's head is getting chopped off in hand. Is this not the same thing? And they're going to do the same thing. Was it not just a hanging two years ago in Atlanta? Sugar with it. That park. Piedmont Park. They hung a woman. They let y'all know what time it is. Some of y'all just walk around here eating popcorn and watching the birds. Like, 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 life is good. Y'all saving up dollars, and dollar ain't gonna mean nothing in a little bit. That's, That's why I said, remember the former days, what was they storing up? Gold and silver? How many of y'all got gold in them? Silver? This is what the writing is for. We gotta look and see, okay, how did they make it? How, what did they do? And then you gotta look at this look at this society and say, what is actually falling? What is about to stop working? You see what I'm saying? We got so we get so caught up in cryptocurrency, all this money we can't see. We selling our souls for uh, digital digits, <laughs> thinking we really got money. Little do y'all know that little money y'all think y'all got the bank using to get more money. And then all of a sudden you got a bill. You trying to figure out why I say this language? What do you mean, Miss Lane? I got $400 miscellaneous fees. Well, you know, I don't know, sir, but you got to You're sitting there angry, yelling at him, still give me the car. <laughs> still give me the car. Because we that program. 
think we really owe these people something, man. Let's keep going. Verse 42. Uh -huh. Now when Judah and his brethren saw that memories were multiplied, and that the forces did encamp themselves in their borders, for they knew how the king had given commandment to destroy the people, they utterly abolished them. They said one to another, Let us restore the decayed fortune of our people, and let us fight for our people in the sanctuary. Then was the congregation gathered together, that they might be ready for battle, and that they might pray to Elohim and ask mercy and compassion. This is the steps we gotta do. Like Elder said, we gotta, we gotta, we, we gotta kill the enemy within. What you saying? I mean, we gotta be at, we gotta be at mercy, grace, compassion. That's why I tell you, First Kings eight, what? That they shall pray towards the land which I am giving them, and repent for their sins. You know what I'm saying? He shall forgive us, and we shall, we shall be peace with even those who are against us. Come on. Verse forty-five. Now Jerusalem lay void as a wilderness. There was none of her children that went in or out. The sanctuary of Yahweh also was trotted down, and aliens kept the stronghold. Uh -huh. The heathen had their habitation in that place, and joy was taken from Jacob, and the pipe with the harp ceased. Wherefore the children of Israel assembled themselves together and came to Mat Matisqua. Hold on, so the first step was they assembled themselves. Oh, you don't want to gather, huh? Assemble yourself together. Then what? Come on. Matispa over against Jerusalem. For as Matispa was the place where they prayed. Then they came together and prayed. Come on. A for time in Israel. Then they fasted that day. Then they fasted together. What did they, what did they say? Confess your faults to one another. Then what? Pray together. Then what? Uh-huh. And put it. This is how we be forgiven as a nation partner. We have to come together. Don't let nobody ever tell you you ain't got to come together with your people. They lying to themselves thinking that. They lying to themselves thinking you ain't got to gather with your people. You're supposed to and commanded to be with your people. Left for nine, two, and one. Tell us to gather ourselves together for that great and just day. Come on, man. Just don't nobody desire us, man. Don't nobody want to deal with us. Don't, don't nobody want us alive. So who else you gonna go to besides your own people? Come on. I'm sorry, I'm uh -huh. Then they fasted that day and put on sackcloth uh -huh. and cast ashes upon their heads uh -huh. and rent their clothes uh -huh. and laid open the book of the Torah of Yahweh. Wherein the heathen has sought to paint the likeness of, of their, their ideas, of their way of culture, of how they think things should be. But he said first, he said, open up the book of the Torah, who? Of the Father, right? Because there's an enemy who's trying to paint the likeness of their ideas and your mind. Which some of us know as a Willie Lynch theory, Stockholm Syndrome, Jim Crow. All this derived from this captivity. You want to understand what we're in today? Look at this captivity. It's the same thing. It's okay to eat pork. We sacrifice uh, to idols with swine. That's what they promote to our people. It's okay to celebrate Christmas. It means nothing. They got the nerve to put Christ on it. Back in the 1800s, they never even, it, uh, Christmas wasn't even allowed in America. Okay. It was called Exodus. Before that, it was called the Winter Solstice. Come on, man. Same thing. They just got a good wordplay. Words as smooth as butter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at this, man. This is what we're going through today. Let's go over to uh, 1 Maccabees 4 and 9. So now you're going to pretty much going to read. And going through uh, chapter 3, pretty much Judah Maccabees is telling them, like, look, we got to stand up. We got to protect ourselves. Ain't nobody else going to do it. Somebody got to rise up for us. And it said, then Simon made the trumpets and cried with a loud voice. Huh? How many of y'all going to cry to the Father? 
and spare not. That's what we talk about. Or are you doing that to the Father or are you doing that to, to the people? Cry loud, spare not to your Father first. We got to get Israel together first. And Judah Maccabee exemplified the perfect way to do it. You want to win a war? Go to your Father first. Follow the instructions. Repent when your sins come together. Fast and pray. And then it shall be revealed to you in the palm of your Father's hands what to do. Because he made our hands to what? War. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, man. This is the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 4, starting at verse 9. I watch what he say. Remember how our fathers were delivered by Yahweh. It said, remember how your fathers were delivered. And where? In the Red Sea. In the what? Red Sea. Uh-huh. When Pharaoh pursued them with an army. When Pharaoh pursued them with an army. What did we do to be delivered? We cried out. Cried he out said it was a great cry in Egypt. I heard the pain of my people. Do y'all think Israel is in a state of pain? No. Yeah, we had, we had 400 years, though. Huh? I heard the cry of my people who cried out to me. Do we really want to be delivered? Or are we just talking deliverance? Do we really want to be saved? Or are we just talking salvation? Huh? Do we really believe in Mishiach in his way? Or are we just talking? That's what we're supposed to do. Huh? Come on. Verse 10. Now therefore, let us cry unto heaven. Israel, cry. Cry to your father. Come on. If peradventure, Jehovah our Elohim will have mercy upon us uh -huh. and remember the covenant. Did he say go bang with your enemy? No. Nope. Did he say go bang with your enemy? Huh? Did he say go, go condemn all that don't keep the commandments? No, he said cry to your father that he may have mercy upon you. Come on. And remember the covenant of our fathers uh -huh. and destroy this host before our face this day. Right. We can't go nowhere. He told us in Hosea, Hosea 5 and 15. He said, until we take responsibility for our actions, he's going back to the throne. And he's chilling. He ain't hearing nothing until we take responsibility and we make haste and we seek him early. We're not in that type of state right now. You can't even convince me to be in there. We still arguing over doctrine and names. Huh? We still argue on whether we should wear fringes or not wear fringes. We still argue what the Sabbath is, what the feast day it is. But brother, are you this? Huh? Are you actually living the way that the apostles did when they were being persecuted? Ain't nobody really living like that, man. Let's be honest. Ain't nobody just getting really persecuted for the word like that. Let's be honest. A lot of us getting getting did how we did because it's foolish, man. That's it. And we back it up with the word. Let's be honest, man. You'll know them by they what? You'll know them by they what? Come on, man. Don't let nobody deceive you with beautiful words. Don't let nobody deceive you with, with materialistic things that look good to you. Silver and gold, right? That's what they do. They seduce you with that. Let their actions talk more than their words. Okay? Yeah. Come on. Verse 11. Uh -huh. That so all the heathen may know that Jehovah is the Elohim who delivered and saved Israel. Hallelujah. That they may know. They know you by who your God is, not you. Thanks. And if you ain't if you ain't prophesying to the wind and crying out loud, how they gonna know who your God is? If you don't even know who your God is, you don't even know how to love him. You talking about Elohim, but you don't even know Elohim. Huh? You condemn everybody else, but not have yet remove the moat out of your own eye. We got to clean our temple, y'all. We got to rededicate ourselves back to our temple. Our temple is the people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this should be a lesson to y'all looking at Judah Maccabees. Y'all rising up and say, I'm going to be the one to love more. I'm going to be the one to serve more. I'm going to be the one who take care of our people. I'm going to be the one. If they got to go down like that, give my life. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Excuse my language. There's some sucker ass niggas in our nation. Straight up. It is. Oh, you a king? Then show me your servitude first. Because my
Lord King Waco Hamashia was his feet. He was his disciples' feet. What you do? Huh? How many of you get on your knees and watch the one who who who's lower than you feet? How many brothers wash their feet while I get? Huh? Who washed your children while I feet yet? Huh? Huh? How many of y'all that took somebody off the street and go really go feed and spend some time with them? Without bringing the camera so everybody else can see. Without bringing the camera. You got to start measuring people by this book. Not they words, man. Because these people really be y'all. You think it's something that, that's evil really good. When you done had good the whole time, you just been looking for something. And something appeared to be looking, what you thought was good and turned out to be evil. Huh? Never supposedly on your way. Everything is established by how many witnesses? Two, three, three, three. Bro, I need to see the proof. So my proof is in the pudding. Come on, man. That's why a lot of us fall in the states. Whether that be by relationships or, or, or getting led by people, whatever case is, if we don't really fool people. Let's be honest. Let's be honest, right? But Judah McAfee showed it. I'm going to stand up for evil Jews. I'm going to get that temple back. I'm going to get our history back. And I'm going to put my life on the line. But I'm going to go to my Elohim first. I ain't about to just go out there foolishly with pride. No, 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 no. I know I'm nothing. I'm just a vessel. But let me go to the one who gives me the power. Some of us try to take the power for ourselves and say it's us. When you are nothing, you are a vessel. Really, all of us are filthy rags. You just hoping, by the grace of the Most High, you may be clean and have those white garments at the end. Let's keep going. Verse 12. Then the strangers lifted up their eyes and mm. saw them coming over against them. Oh, hop down to verse 20. So now you see Judah Maccabee about to put that work in. And as you see, when you really read, one thing he always did before going to war is two things. Praise and praise. In his own language. In his own language. He said it again. In his own language. In his own language. He knew the power. Y'all had, y'all literally, y'all realize y'all have the key to unlock the power. You understand? Y'all have the key to unlock the power within you. You just gotta know the source of the unity. And just like your phone, your phone got power, but eventually the juice gonna run out, right? You gotta go back to the power source, the one who gives you the power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's see this. Come on, verse 20. Verse 20. For when they perceived that Judah had put their host to flight. And Ooh, come on, say it again. And when they had perceived that Judah had put their host to flight uh -huh. and were burning the tents. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we, oh yeah, we, we about to make a shot now. Y'all y'all don't, don't wake up the lion, the lion's here now, come on. For the smoke that was seen declared was done. Oh yeah, come on. When therefore they perceived these things, they were so afraid. Mm. And seeing also the host of Judah in the plain ready to fight. Oh, so they are, he said he was what? Ready to fight. What did he have to do to prepare? He had to do what? Okay. Go to his father. Okay. And to prepare. They seen them and said, oh, these brothers got too much confidence. Mind you, how many people did they come with? 40,000. 40,000 people scared. Of this small remnant. That's the power the Father gives you. Again, remember, look at look at uh, look at Levi and them. Only a few of them, but they had the power of the Father within them to slay the whole village. Y'all all got that in you if you actually release it. But you gotta go to your Father to ask permission of that first, and you better do it with a clean heart. You better do it with a contrite heart. You better do it with a heart really wanting to do it and not just have power. A lot of us go get power drunk. Dang. Trick, yeah, trick it. You cast now demon, now you just want to put demons in people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on. Verse 22. Uh -huh. They fled everyone into land of strangers. Right. Then Judah returned 
to spoil the tents, mm. where they got much gold and silver and blue silk and purple of the sea and great riches. Mm. And after this, they returned to their land and praised Jehovah. And they did what? And praised Jehovah. And they did what? Praise Jehovah. And they did what? Praise Jehovah. And that's what we're doing tonight, man. We're about to praise the Father, man. The Father, the Father, the Father, man. Verse 25, and they sung a song of thanksgiving to Yahweh, uh -huh. because it is good, because his mercy endures forever. And mercies endure forever. So the rest of the chapter is talking about pretty much they get down and dirty. They just like them and dice them. They ain't playing no games with them. They ain't playing no games with them. And so we're going we to end it with reading, uh, we're going to start at uh, verse 42 and read that whole thing through. Oh, we're actually going to read up to verse 59. So we're going to read 42 through 59. That's going to be it with it. Come on. All right, First Maccabees chapter 4, verse 42. Uh -huh. So he chose priests of blameless conversation, such as had pleasure in the Torah, who cleansed the sanctuary and bear out defiled stones. So what do we see first? You got to cleanse the temple. Before doing the work of the temple, you have to first cleanse, which goes back to even when people teach it. Be cleansed first. Take your time. Heal. And then you can do your work. That's why Psalm 51 tells you all about it. If you really do the breakdown of Psalm 51, he tells you the steps of healing first. Well, first of all, admitting your faults. Ask the Father for mercy. Repenting. He said, then I will teach transgressors thy ways. Then I will teach transgressors thy ways. But before then, he would have he had a healing process. He cleansed his temple. He cleansed his temple from his infirmities and defilement. We are all defiled people. We have to take the necessary steps to cleanse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Verse forty-four. Uh -huh. And when as they consulted what to do with the altar of burnt offerings, which was profane. They thought it best to pull it down, uh, lest it should be a reproach to them. Right. Because of the heathen had to follow it. Right, so some of us, we, we may get some nice things back and still want to use it. No, it's already been tainted. It's been tainted. It's been tainted. Why well, go back into something if it's already been tainted by your enemy? It's already there. So you got to remove, sometimes you just got to remove people. You got to remove things. So then the real process of healing and cleansing can start happening. Some of us be trying to hold on while cleansing. We be putting herbs in our body, yet we still feed the parasites. Come on. Wherefore, they pulled it down and laid up the stones in the mountain of the temple in a convenient place until there should come a prophet to show what should be done with them. Then they took the whole stones according to the Torah of Yahweh and built a new altar according to the form, and made up the sanctuary and the things that were within the temple, and hollowed the courts. They made also new holy vessels, mm. and into the temple they brought the menorah and the altar of burnt offerings and of incense and the table. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. And upon the altar they burned incense, and the lamps that were upon the menorah they lit and they might give light in the temple. Furthermore, they set the loaves upon the table and spread out the vials and the bales and finished all the works which they had begun to make. Now on the fifth and twentieth day of the ninth month, which is called the month Kislu, in the hundred and forty and eighth year, they rose up betimes in the morning and offered sacrifice according to the Torah upon the new altar of Upon the new altar. We must be renewed. Do you understand that? Before offering anything to the Father, you must be renewed. You cannot sit here and tell me the Father is dealing with you and you're still in the same sin. It don't work like that. You must be renewed. That's what repentance is. You have to be renewed. Re repentance means you can turn away to not look back. Don't be a lot twice. Don't be that. You have to be renewed and cleansed before offering.
offering any sacrifice. A lot of us literally pray and our prayers be defiled. The Father did not answer to no stink. You understand that? So if you know you in sin, you say you're praying, knowing you're in sin, and really saying it's blessed, you are no different than you. No different. Come on. Verse 52. Uh -huh. Now on the fifth and twentieth day of the ninth month, which is called the month of the slew, in the hundred and forty and eighth year, they rose up in time in the morning and offered sacrifice according to the Torah upon the new altar of burnt offerings, right. which they had made. Look at what time and what day the heathen have profaned it, even in that we praise Yahweh with songs and scissors. With songs and what? Come on, man. And harps and huh? cymbals. Come on, y'all can't tell when music ain't part of us, man. Anybody want to talk about truth music has always been in it, whether you like it or not. Jewel, again, means praise. You do that with your lips, you do that with your body. And that's always been, that's what they tried to cut off in slavery, y'all. They didn't want us to do this. This is where we get our power from. This is where we get our power from. Open thy lips and show forth thy praise. Come on. Verse 55. And all the people fell upon their faces, worshiping and praising Yahweh, who had given them good success. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. And so they kept the feast of dedication of the altar eight days and offered burnt offerings with gladness and sacrificed the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. They decked also the forefront of the forefront of the temple with crowns of gold and with shields and the gates and the chambers they renewed and hang doors upon them. So that's why y'all see we got the menorah and all that is a part of the altar. The lights, all that was a part of the altar. Y'all, this is where the Christmas try to get the little lights from. They take that from the piece of dedication. You understand? This was us. Y'all remember y'all playing the barbecue? That's what we did all the time. <laughs> y'all say, come on. Verse 58. Thus was there very great gladness among the people, for that Yahweh put away the reproach of the heathen. Uh -huh. Moreover, Judah and his brethren, with the whole congregation. With the whole congregation, what? Of Israel. Uh -huh. Ordained that the days of the feast of dedication of the altar should be kept in their season from what? year to year uh -huh. by the space of eight days uh -huh. from from the five and twentieth day of the month to slew with mirth and gladness. Hallelujah. Man, give more time. Come on, come on. So that's the piece of dedicating. That's what that is rededicating ourselves back to the temple. Which we know for a fact we don't have a physical temple. We are the temple dedicating ourselves back to Hamashiach. He kept the feast of dedication, so will we. He baptized, so will we. He healed and through our healing, we will heal others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him a round of applause. Anybody have any questions? Any comments on the left? Anybody? Oh, yes. Um, when you were talking about Saturnalia, what, 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 on the first day of the festivity, on the 25th, a young kid would often be publicly sacrificed at the temple. See? And we do a chip. We do it on Thanksgiving. We get that hand, hand hot. Big. Any other questions, comments? Anything on the lesson? Huh? No problem at all. Hallelujah. And if anybody wants that, I have the, I, 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 I download that uh, iBook so I can like uh, airplay, airplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to use your, uh, I got eight. That's fine. I know that. Let you know what's up there. Any other comments, questions? What my 
sister that I have for my blessing. Yeah. It's cast. They stick you saying the month cast law. Is that November, December? Kiss law. Kiss law. It's 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 the middle of November to the middle of December. Okay. Anybody else comments? Say good. So with that, we say slow, slow, slow.